We are very happy that you're watching this program. My name is Field and Allison. My wife is Janet. We've been married since the 6th of June, 1969. Perhaps that gives you an idea about how old we are. We have five children who are all married. We have 22 grandchildren. Since 1984, we've been helping families across Africa. Janet and I have written four books which talk about marriage and family life in Africa. Janet has a master's degree in marriage and family counseling. My master's degree is in Bible and related studies, which also includes some counseling. I believe that our years in Africa have equipped us to understand some of the problems you are having in your marriages. We want to help you in every way we can. What Fielden did not tell you is that in all our years of marriage, we too have had to work through our own marriage and family problems. Just a few. For sure, you have some marriage problems just like we have had. Every person who has to work with another person or with people in general will have problems. People in education have conflicts. Also, people who are in business have personnel problems. Even church people struggle with one another. Therefore, we can expect that two people living together as husband and wife will have troubles. Many people believe that if they have problems with their mate in marriage, that they have married the wrong person and therefore they have a right to either divorce that person and marry another one or marry more than one wife. On our brochures and in our teaching, we have the motto, Marriage for a Lifetime. We believe that not only is it possible for married people to stay together all of their lives, but that is the right thing to do. It is what God expects in marriage. The question that we want to answer today comes from the scripture in the book of Hebrews, chapter 13 and verse 4, which says, Marriage should be honored by all, and the marriage bed kept pure. For God will judge the adulterer and all the sexually immoral. What does it mean to keep our marriage beds pure, Janet? The word pure has the meaning of keeping something free from dirt or anything that would make it unclean. Pure also has the idea of clean, wholesome, good, perfect. Therefore, when we are talking about marriage, keeping the marriage bed pure refers to keeping the marriage separated from anything that would make it not pure, such as any kind of sexual activity with others, which would include pornography. Looking back at the scripture in Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 4, the writer said, God will judge those who are immoral and those who commit adultery. In our day, it almost seems that married men and some married women have the expectation that marriage cannot be kept pure and that being impure or having affairs outside marriage is not only expected, but it is also okay. Yeah, we live in a very permissive society. Our youth see sexual immorality displayed on television, in the movies, and in other places. They've come to accept the idea that sexual impurity is the normal for everyone. They carry that same idea into their marriages. Men feel that if their wives do not satisfy them, that they have the right to look for sexual fulfillment with someone else. Either they do not know or they willfully ignore the fact that God expects the marriage bed to be pure. Paul instructed the young man Timothy in 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 12, Do not let anyone look down on you because you are young, but be an example for the believers in your speech your conduct, your love, your faith, and your purity. There's that word, purity. God expects the youth as well as the adults to be pure. There are no exceptions to that rule. Every person is to keep himself or herself sexually pure, free from the dirt or uncleanness that has permeated our society. Mm -hmm. The English word adultery means to make something dirty. To adulterate something is to make it unclean. Marriage is to be pure and holy. Before we continue talking about purity in marriage, let us look back again at Hebrews 13, verse 4. There the writer begins by saying, Marriage is to be honored by all. I can think of some ways that we honor our marriages. Number one, 
we honor our marriages by realizing that God's desire for marriage was that it should not be broken apart. The Pharisees believed that it was okay for a man to divorce his wife. So if she didn't cook his food the way he liked, he could divorce her. They believed that a man had the right to divorce his wife for any reason. When they asked Jesus about that, he had a very straight answer for them. In Matthew chapter 19, verses 7 through 9, Jesus explained to them, Moses gave you permission to divorce your wives because you are so hard to teach. But it was not like that from the beginning of creation. He continued, I tell you that any man who divorces his wife for any reason other than adultery, which is impurity, commits adultery if he marries some other woman. We could say, in our own words, God has never permitted divorce, and if a man divorces his wife and marries another woman, he is sinning. In my study of that scripture, I see that God hates divorce. Mm -hmm. We can even read that in the book of Malachi, chapter 2 and verse 6. But what about if a wife sins and commits adultery? Men are ready to condemn the guilty wife and kick her out of the house and quickly marry another wife. Is that what Jesus is saying in that scripture? I don't believe that is what Jesus meant at all. What Jesus was saying was that there may be a case where a woman sins, but then she realizes her mistake and begs to be forgiven. Does a man have the right to tell her, no, you have sinned, and Jesus said, I should divorce you? Jesus is the one who emphasized forgiveness, even up to 70 times 7. Men sometimes feel that because they are men, and they feel that they have to have sex more often, that this rule doesn't really apply to them. Men feel that the wife should just overlook their unfaithfulness and forgive them, but they're not willing to forgive their wives. Is there a scripture where God says that impurity in marriage is okay for men, but it is wrong for women? Of course not. Paul states very clearly that some of the Corinthian Christians had been immoral, they had been adulterers or homosexuals in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 9 through 10. But he said that anyone who does these acts will not possess God's kingdom. He even said that some people deceive themselves by thinking that these sins are okay. He says, don't be deceived by Satan. They are not okay. Paul told the Corinthians, you have been purified. You've been dedicated to God. You've been put right with God by the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. That's chapter 6, verse 11. We've been married for 45 years, which means we're getting old. But we're still together. One of the saddest things I see in African families today is when couples who've been married for many years no longer live together. Maybe the old husband lives alone at home trying to survive by himself, and the old wife goes to live with her children. They no longer talk together or work together or sleep together. God did not say that when a couple gets old, then it is okay to divorce one another. Do you remember that Sarah was 90 years old and she still loved and stayed with her old husband, Abraham, who was 100 years old? Not only were they still living together, but they were still having sex together. What a great example for us today. Don't you just love that old story about Abraham and Sarah? But you know, they really had some big marriage problems as well. Like the time that Abraham lied about Sarah and told the king that she was his sister. That almost caused the king to sleep with her. And then there was the time that Abraham married Sarah's maid, Hagar. That caused some serious problems in their home, but they never divorced each other. Too often today, people are ready to take the easy road of divorce rather than working through their problems, finding a solution, forgiving one another, and then moving on. You know, all we can do is work through one problem at a time and forgive one another until the next problem comes along, and then we do that same process Mm -hmm. over again. I was talking about some ways we honor our marriages. Remember the verse in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 4, which says that marriage should be honored by all people. A second way that we can honor our marriages is by doing just what you were talking about, Fielden. We forgive one another. 
there's not a day that goes by that I don't have to forgive you <laughs> many times. <laughs> uh, wait just a minute. I'm not that bad, am I? You know that marriage is a two-way street. A husband and wife have to forgive each other. In Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 32, Paul said, Be kind and compassionate to one another. Forgive each other, just as in Christ God has forgiven you. Sometimes forgiveness is hard to do. I think about Jesus when he was hanging on the cross. He looked down at the ones who had crucified him, and he said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they're doing. Luke chapter 23, verse 34. In Matthew chapter 6, verses 14 and 15, Jesus said that God's forgiveness of us depends on our willingness to forgive people who sin against us. Husband, it means that if your wife commits adultery, you must forgive her because you also want God to forgive you. It was not easy for Jesus to forgive those who killed him or for him to continue to forgive us when we sin over and over, but he forgave and he forgives us. It takes a strong man to forgive his wife and continue living with her. It also takes a strong woman to forgive her sinful husband. But look at the advantages of forgiveness. The marriage remains together. The family is not broken apart. The children remain with their father and mother. And we do God's will. I remember a story about a family that we knew in Africa. They were Christians and had children. The husband bought a new farm, which was a bit far from his home. He left his wife at home and traveled to this new farm. There he had to build a house and prepare the farm and plant crops. He was gone for almost one whole year. When he returned home, he found that his wife was six months pregnant. Immediately they came to us for counseling. We asked the wife if she wanted to divorce her husband and stay with this new man who had gotten her pregnant. Very quickly, she began to cry and said she was sorry for what she had done. She begged her husband to forgive her and not chase her away. Eventually, he said that he would forgive her, but he added that he could not forget what she had done. In truth, how could he forget such a terrible thing, especially when every day he saw this child? that she bore. That was very hard for him, but because he was trying to do the right thing, he did forgive his wife and they stayed together. A third way that we can honor our marriage is by loving one another. When a man marries a woman, they are so much in love. They don't think they can live without each other. But somewhere along the road of marriage, that love sometimes grows cold. Janet, what causes love to grow dim or even fade away in marriage? Soon after two people get married and they are together all the time, they begin to see faults in one another. It is hard for a person to see his own faults or her own faults, but it is easy to see the faults in the other person. Perhaps the wife does not keep the house clean or she does not cook food like her husband's mother cooked food. And the wife quickly notices that her husband is not careful about how he spends money, perhaps. Maybe he likes to stay out late with his friends. These things begin to fester in her heart like a thorn that can fester in your foot. Slowly, almost without realizing it, the husband and the wife begin to grow apart and love begins to die. Perhaps they don't share those feelings with one another to work through the problems but they permit those little mistakes to grow and grow until they seem like mountains in the marriage. That is when the man begins to look at another woman and see how she looks and acts so much better than his wife, and the wife shines at work and other men notice her. Love is dying in that marriage, and the love this couple once had is now being transferred to someone else. Unless something is done quickly to correct these mistakes, Divorce happens, or sure. the man marries another wife. Fielden, is there something a couple can do to keep their love alive and healthy? I'm happy that you asked that question. Jesus told a very funny parable about a man who had a huge plank in his own eye, but he was quick to judge another person who had just a small speck of dirt in his eye. That was found in Matthew chapter 7, verses 3 through 5. 
Does a husband have the right to judge and condemn his wife when she does not keep the house clean, when he often stays away from home visiting with his friends? Can a wife judge and condemn her husband for a weakness she sees in him while she knows she also has faults? Each of them has mistakes or weaknesses. A husband and a wife should point out the mistakes or the things they don't like in their mate with kindness and love, not in a way that judges and condemns. I think one of the big problems a married couple has is failing to communicate with each other. You know, we're afraid that we will make the other person angry or we will drive them away. In reality, if we keep things hidden in our hearts, those things become bigger and bigger. Finally, those things get so big, all we can see is how bad the other person is. If you want to keep your marriage healthy, talk about your small and big concerns and work through them. Solve the problems and get on with loving each other. I remember that in our own marriage, when you would do something I didn't like, or even something that might hurt me, I would often just keep quiet, thinking that if I slept on it, that tomorrow things would be okay. It never worked that way. Those little things grew bigger and bigger until we had a major problem. I have since learned that even if you do some very small thing for my own well-being and for the good of our marriage, I need to tell you. Usually when I tell you what is bothering me, you say, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to hurt you. Then things are good and our love for each other grows. That's good advice, Fielden. Communication in marriage is like blood to the body. If you don't have any blood, you know that you will die. Your marriage will also die if you don't have communication in it. Another way to give honor and respect to our marriages is by being faithful to one another. That goes back to the purity that we were talking about. The Hebrew writer in chapter 13 and verse 4 said that we should keep the marriage bed pure and that God will judge all who commit sexual sin. Sexual intercourse between a husband and wife is pure and good. As long as they have sex only with each other, they are keeping their bed pure. But when they step out of their home to have any kind of sexual relationship with another person, they have made their own marriage unclean. Listen to what Paul told the Thessalonians in chapter 4, verses 3 through 7. It is God's will that you should be sanctified, that you should avoid sexual immorality, that each of you should learn to control his own body in a way that is holy and honorable. The Lord will punish men for all such sins, for God did not call us to be impure, but to live a holy life. You know, it was God who put these strong sexual needs in our bodies. But it is God also who has made a way for us to get complete sexual satisfaction. That way is marriage. Mm -hmm. Don't let anyone tell you that sex is a sin or it is a bad thing. Sex is a good thing, created by God for a husband and wife to enjoy and to express their love for one another. We can control our bodies. We can avoid sexual sin. We can stay married to our wives and husbands. When we learn these ways of God and practice them, our marriages will be blessed and happy. Every worthy effort in life is difficult. It's worth all the effort you put into your marriage to keep it strong and healthy, even through the difficult times. We've enjoyed talking to you. May your marriage be happy and blessed. Write to us at aimfradio at gmail.com with your questions or comments. Thank you for watching.